when the economy went bad, there were so many people coming in wanting help. Learning how to use a computer, learning how to uh, search for a job, that the, the public use computers are just inundated. And saw the uh, announcement online about the new program for VISTA volunteers and libraries and thought, well, we have the computer lab. And we had been uh, talking to the job center people, state job center, and we knew what kind of capacity they had, and we wanted to establish something that would uh, uh, not duplicate unnecessarily at any rate what they did, but uh, uh, complement it. And with the uh, opportunity for a VISTA, uh, well, let's go for it. The Fond du Lac Public Library, we were lucky to have a vision from Ken Hall, the library director, and a great physical space with equipment that had already been donated by um, local companies. And there was a lot of goodwill and strong connections in the community when we got there because the library had been so involved um, in community events and things like that. We were also lucky to have two VISTAs for our first year. Sarah Burns was my partner in all of this for the first year. The cornerstone of, of everything we did was the Opportunity Center, and it still is. And it's an open lab. It's staffed by volunteers for 27 hours a week, and it's on a schedule that we designed to complement the Job Center on Peters Avenue in Fond du Lac. They're only open uh, during the daytime until about 4.30. And so we designed a schedule for evenings, um, some weekend hours, and also some uh, hours in the morning and around lunchtime when they were having trouble meeting the demand. Funlock also had a great model for library programs. The library had received a grant for over $50,000 before we arrived, uh, and it was to set up a financial literacy program called Money Smart You, and it had been so successful, and uh, and the classes were set up so well that we, we kind of took that model, and we made our own class series for employ employment skills called Job Smart You, and we found retired human resources executives who were willing to teach the classes. And actually, a group of them developed an original three-part curriculum, including uh, resumes in the application process, an interviewing class, and personal mock interview appointments that we were able to offer um, on a repeating basis to people. And in, in addition to that, we also have offered special topics classes on job searching for older workers, um, people with troubled work histories, job searching online for people who um, don't have very good computer skills, and, and other topics that we've been able to offer. Within our first two weeks on the job, we applied for and received a $16,000 um, Library Services and Technology Act, LSTA grant, um, which we used to purchase mobile lab equipment so that we could take these classes and um, take them on the road to the smaller libraries and uh, local communities in the county. And we've held classes in Brandon and North Fond du Lac with that equipment so far, and we're also uh, we have plans to use the equipment more extensively on site for our own classes. It's definitely impacted the community. You can tell that by the numbers. It's hard to give a, uh, uh, to prove uh, outcomes. But anecdotally, the number of people who have said, come back and either told somebody here at the library, you know, thank you, without you I wouldn't have, without the service I wouldn't have gotten a job. We know it's had an impact on the community. And as far as the, uh, uh, for the library, um, 
the, those that fund the library are definitely aware of this service. And that's what they mentioned to me when they mentioned the value of the library. They don't talk about the traditional services. But those responsible for funding who may not be library users definitely know about the Opportunity Center and mention its value. So it has had a very positive impact on the library, which we will need. Working at the help desk, um, it's one of the first desks people see when they come in, and I have referred a lot of people down to the Opportunity Center. Um, and I know of at least two cases where um, people had come back and thanked me and said to pass along thanks to the Opportunity Center for helping them find and locate a job. So they've been very happy with it. The Opportunity Center has been, it's been great having it up here because we have a lot of people that come into the library and they need help filling out job applications and they need help doing a resume. So it's nice that we can send them someplace and they can go up there. And especially since it's just right up the stairs, they come to the desk and we say, oh, you can, did you know you can go up to the Opportunity Center? We don't have to um, extend your time because you can go up there and there's no time limit. You can fill out the job application. They can help you with the resume. And it's... Nice. The Opportunity Center has been really helpful for the library. Um, I particularly noticed that people coming in for help appreciate the fact that they can get some one-on-one -on -one help there. Um, with as busy as we are at the reference desk with other interruptions, it's hard to help people and uh, give them good feedback on, on what they're looking for. So that has been a major improvement for us in our service to the public. I know it's really popular. There are people who come in all the time and use it. Uh, and whenever we tell someone about it, they're really excited and they can't believe that there's a resource completely dedicated to them and their situation. And they always like walk, whenever, whenever we like hand somebody a pamphlet, even if the Opportunity Center isn't open, so they have to wait a couple hours to get in, they're excited and they smile and they're really happy. So it feels good to be able to give them something instead of just turning them away. So it's been positive, I think. I was a part of Leadership Fond du Lac this year and our small group service project was a life skills course with the seniors at Fondi Central, the alternative high school. And so we worked with about eight to 12 kids and one of the things we wanted to teach them about was resumes and interviewing. Um, and just basic kind of application skills. Uh, most of them have never had a job before and were really worried about getting a job. A lot of them had to support themselves right out of school, so they really needed to learn how to do this. So we uh, held our first session, actually, of the kind of curriculum here at the library in the Opportunity Center. Um, Josh, you told them about the like resources here. And then we also had three HR people from local companies come in and actually go over resumes with them, like show them how to do an interview and just answer their questions, kind of walk them through the whole process. And it worked out really well. The, uh, the feedback we got from the kids was really positive and they said they felt a lot more prepared and they weren't as like scared, which I think helps them like appear more confident when they go to their interview. So hopefully it worked out for them. But it was nice to have that space. And most of them didn't know that it was there. So it kind of introduced it to a group of kids who were probably going to be, you know, looking for jobs for the next 40 years. So hopefully it helped them. One extra project that we worked on was painting the bookmobile last summer with a group of middle school kids. Um, we have a project in the works this year that is a similar program. Um, but Fond du Lac was lucky enough last year to have five vistas, and two of us were at the library, two of us were at the volunteer center, and one was at UW Extension. And all of our organizations got together to put on a summer youth leadership program. And the culminating activity for that was having the kids design and paint the library's bookmobile. 
I kind of help the kids, give them some direction and help the kids that were looking for something to do, find something to do. And then uh, I also helped out in the classroom sessions um, as kind of a TA type person. But um, I painted a little, but I left most of it to the kids. Uh, lots of them would just ask me for ideas or does this look okay? Can you help me find this color brush? Uh, it was a really fun project. I think it was a good experience. They all, especially the planning part, um, they got into some good discussions about what should go on there, how it can relate to their community. Uh, just helped them work together. They even got into some, a little bit of political discussions. But uh, yeah, and then the painting itself, they all worked together and taking turns with brushes. And, and then just having done that, accomplished that, they could at least for a little while see the bookmobile and say, hey, I did that. I think it turned out great. Uh, it's a shame that, you know, nobody will see it anymore, but I was really blown away. I thought it was going to be, you know, etchings or kids' drawings, but it had a background and lots of colors. I, it really looked great. Everybody complimented me on it. Except for the part of uh, putting primer on the bus, and well, it seemed like it was about 150 degrees out that day. Uh, no, I thought it was a lot of fun. And... Uh, I think it had a, uh, lar a large impact on the kids that did it. They had fun doing it. I know it was, uh, a, it was a good uh, PR thing for the library, um, and I'm glad we did it. And if we have a uh, uh, similar opportunity, to do it again. And if anybody wants to buy a well-decorated uh, bookmobile cheap, let me know. to uh, incorporate the service into the main line of what the library is doing. Uh, we've tried from the beginning to stress to staff that this is a uh, not a something extra, it is a library service. We have to assign staff to carry out those duties and incorporate it in just make it as much a part of our information services as uh, anything else. And if because of funding difficulties next year, 2012, if we have to adjust services to match funding, we cannot diminish our uh, support for the Opportunity Center. That's got to continue. So I think one of the biggest lessons we've learned, we've learned a lot from placing VISTAs in libraries, but we see how critical it is for staff to be bought into this program. Uh, and, and we're seeing our VISTAs push libraries to um, do new things and to sort of expand the definition of what being a library or a librarian is. Uh, and so we've seen how critical it is that staff are on board with the mission, that they're supportive, and that they're willing to help out. Um, you know, we, we sometimes have challenges with staff feeling threatened by this person coming in or, or not knowing what they could do with a volunteer or not fully understanding that while they are a volunteer, they're being paid, but through DPI. And um, I think there can be a lot of confusion. So we've really learned that staff need to be uh, brought in early to the process. They need to be on board and they really need to be supportive of this work or it's just going to flop. Um, we can have the most amazing director in the world, um, but without supportive staff, it doesn't go anywhere. So I, I think that if the community and the staff is not part of the shaping the vision, then this isn't going to work. Libraries are not about books. They're about education. And books and other materials have been the tools for that. And this is not mission creep. The mission of the library isn't static. You ha and the services can't be narrowly defined as taking something off the shelf and passing it across a desk and handing it to somebody. Or they can't be narrowly defined as what you can provide through a website. There are all kinds of other things, too. And as media changes, I'm using media in the broad respect and broad uh, definition of what the uh, 
what it is we use to educate ourselves. You know, as the uh, as business models change, as uh, books go from print to electronic, and uh, you know, libraries could become irrelevant. It doesn't mean that there there's not things they can do in the community to improve the lives of the people in that community. But they have to recognize that and be more willing to change. And fundamentally in their business models and also in what they, how they relate to the community and what they define as their mission, making a distinction between their mission and the tools they use, the services they provide to carry out that mission. We love Fond du Lac Public Library. Um, we, I, I think Fond du Lac has been uh, really one of our big successes in this project. The staff have been open and welcoming. I mean, they're the ones who put this, put a vision and a plan together for Fond du Lac, and we just approved it. Um, you know, they, the staff talked about what they would need. The director was on board from the beginning and, you know, did so much of that groundwork for that first year. Um, and so it has been wonderful to work with the library who values VISTA, who values service, and who sees that they, the library has this big role to play uh, in economic recovery. So it has been such a positive experience. Um, and while, you know, it will be sad not to work with folks in Fond du Lac next year, it's so exciting to see how much has been established and to see what will be sustained. And really, that's the whole point of VISTA, that a volunteer can go in and set something up and have it be maintained without them there. And so I think we're going to see that in Fond du Lac, and I think that's just something that they should be really proud of, that you as a VISTA should be proud of, and something that I'm proud of. The, the case that stands out in my mind is uh, there is a gentleman in the hallway pulling a oxygen tank behind him, and he said he had lost his job at a quarry. He had been laid off after 30 years, yet he couldn't retire. He needed a job but he needed help finding one and he knew he had to touch a computer and my thought was you know good luck with that because you really i don't think he had from talking to him my impression was he didn't have a high school degree but he'd had a very good job for 30 years and now it was gone so how this sort of thing is not going away when the economy gets better it will continue, unfortunately. So the uh, uh, the need for the Opportunity Center is uh, indefinite. 